exam. There's no trick to it whatsoever. We'll send that down to our lab. You have it. Al Sparky, get yes. him, have a look at that. Yes. I, I don't have any education. I mean, I was homeschooled. Coming up, at last, a major discovery that could change everything. And AJ shares his very personal alien abduction encounter. He told me he was a medical professional from another galaxy, and he wanted to just run some, some tests on it. The mysterious planet team are in the desert near Roswell, using high-tech equipment to search for any remains of alien wreckage. But it hasn't all been plain sailing, with the high-performance metal detectors giving off some unusual readings. But we are on four, eh? Yeah. Yeah, we have had some problem with it with the equipment. Uh, the problem is it's sort of hypersensitive. It picks up all sorts of, uh, you know, your coins, and buckle, and belts, and you know, anything metal, and uh, you know, even the static electricity and, and some of the fabric of the clothing. But um, I think we rectify that now. Lee leaves the team alone to continue their search. Well, he pays a visit to longtime friend and dinosaur expert, Dr. Lucas, to get a scientific perspective on the possibility of aliens crashing here in 1947. Well, I think, you know, to some extent, the Roswell incident is a lot like the Loch Ness Monster. The scientific evidence to, you know, support some of the points of view just isn't there. Exactly. A lot of it seems to be eyewitness accounts in, in both cases. The analogy I'd, I'd use, a lot of weak evidence. Like a lot of weak cups of coffee combined together does not make one strong cup of coffee, does it? It makes one big weak cup. Something happened at Roswell you know, more than half a century ago. There are different opinions based on the eyewitness accounts. But science has never demonstrated that there were, there were aliens found there or there were even spaceships found there. They're actually medical doctors from space. Practitioners, you know, okay. Because they're here to help us, not hurt us. What do they want to help us with? Well, uh, it's no more than getting a colonostomy or something like that. They go inside you and they check and see if you've got cancer or something like that. Okay, then they so we've got aliens coming many light around. years away giving us colonostomies. Yes, and, and stuff and like that, yeah, things, things like okay. that, yes. And they're trying to prepare us to go in 2012 with them. With 2012 looming on the horizon, the team broadened their quadrant still further in search of any wreckage. And on day 15 of the search, it pays dividends. This is what you pay good money for. Now look at this. Okay, what we have here is tiny piece of foil, like I was talking about. Uh, we can't accurately say what that is, but it certainly looks like nothing I've seen. What, it's, what does it feel like? It's, uh, it feels like foil, but it kind of, I don't know, it seems to have an interesting property about it. Um, we'll get this to Mysterious Panda Labs pronto and uh, get the results back as soon as possible. We've got one. Work. The foil sample Work. was also covered with an unusual gel that the Mysterious Planet Labs may be able to shed some light on. So what you find, Link? Like, we've actually found some foil, um, some small foil pieces. Which we're going to send famous back. famous foil pieces. Well, these are tiny, they're, 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 they're strange in their structure. Yeah. They seem to bend, they've got right. like, a, like a goo on them. Right. And we're going to send that back to our labs and have it analyzed. And uh, we hope within a couple of days we should have something on that. And we might be able to come back on and, and talk about that. Who knows? In the meantime, Lee has convinced AJ to share his own alien abduction encounter. This is the first time he has discussed this on television. I remember it was a white room, a bright white room, that vaguely smelt of parmesan cheese. Um, a, a guy called Zorak approached me, he was a strange being. Zorak? How do you know his name was Zorak? His name was Zorag because it was written on his jumpsuit. It was a grey jumpsuit and it had Zorag written right there on the side there. He told me he was a medical professional from another galaxy and he wanted to just run some, some tests on me. He took some urine off me um, and then took fluid out of what seemed to be one of my ears. And then he did that gonad cough test thing on me. But, uh, <laughs> made me cough and things for that. And then um, two other beings came in and there was a hell of a kerfuffle. And um, Zorag was arrested. So Octav then entered the room and he said, in fact, that Zorag was a fraud and that Zorag was going to go away for a very long time for malpractice. Zoltev seemed a hell of a lot more professional. Um, 
things were going pretty well and then things started to get crazy. I blanked out for a while. They put a rectal mind probe up my ass and started downloading information about Earth from my brain. <laughs> they used a rectal mind probe to download important information about Earth from my brain. What do you think they learned? I don't know, but it was up there for a hell of a long time. They were using a very slow modem. Maybe they're not as advanced as we think they are, huh? Exactly, Tom, exactly. Maybe they're not as advanced. You know, they're, they're not using some sort of fast sort of jet stream type system. Well, that's for sure. This was a 56K at the best, I'd say. Mm -hmm. It was very slow, so. Very slow. Finally, the mysterious Planet Labs have been able to do a complete analysis of the strange foil sample the team found in the desert. And it's disappointing. Of course we're disappointed we've got those results. It's devastated. Um, that's not what we're here to find. Um, when I heard that the foil we found was nothing more than part of a condom packet, um, I was devastated. You know, specifically, lifestyles ripped for her pleasure. And the, and the strange uh, substance, sort of alluring substance on, on the foil, which I found so interesting at the time, turned out to be nothing more than like a spermicide type product, which they, they put on condoms to um, prevent pregnancy should the, the condom burst in, in, in the worst case scenario. And that's not what we're here to find. Um, and we know that. Um, we haven't given up. You can see behind me, the guys are still working. They'll keep going. They'll keep going till, they, till we find something. I haven't given up either. I'm gonna send that foil um, to someone else, another couple of labs, um, get a second, third opinion on it, and uh, we'll take from there, but um, just gotta keep moving. The team continues searching while Lee tries to arrange a second opinion on the foil condom packet from an old friend at NASA. Um, whack another vodka in there, would you, Tony? Like another one, sir? No, that's fine. Coming up, Lee is still focusing on wreckage. All this and more as Mysterious Planet attempt to finally close the case on the Roswell incident. The Mysterious Planet team have been researching the infamous Roswell incident. They have conducted a search for wreckage, talked to experts, and explored the possibility that the U.S. government has covered it up. General Ramey was there. Uh, there were some other guys, that, lots of high-ranking officers, and one of those security guys of some kind, of some dudes from D.C. back there, I don't know. I didn't know any of them. I'd never seen any of them on the base before. Were the aliens in Roswell the same as the ones that you saw? The big heads and the eyes? Oh, yeah, yeah, some of them are, yeah. No genitalia? Uh, actually, they do have genitalia, but not, 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 I didn't see it on the males, but I know it on the females because I've actually had intercourse with those females of several times. Sorry? Yeah, they, they want my DNA because of my being able to control their ships so and you, stuff. So you, you had intercourse with the female? Yeah, several times, yes. Several times? Yes, before they let me go. In the one night? No, they kept me about a week. And that whole time you were having sex yeah. with aliens? Yeah, well, not all the time having sex with them, but they were doing other of, things a to lot me. Of the, a lot of the time. What? And they were showing me videos and stuff, and they were telling me about 2012. And the, you but didn't have the sex with any of the males? No. Huh? The males don't no, have sex? No, no. I didn't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know, I didn't have anything to do with them, but the thing is, uh, they're trying to prepare us to go in 2012 with them. The A1 salvage yard just out of Roswell. It's here that many people believe the wreckage from the so-called saucer should have come instead of going to Hangar 84. Here they used to deal with wrecks of all shapes and sizes, and of course wrecks that have been caused at great speed which indeed the, the saucer would have been, traveling in excess of Mark II, I believe. <laughs> For the first time on television, let's find out from an expert what kind of state the Roswell wreckage would have been in. I'd be scared.